What's up, everybody? Big Herg, fresh out, and you're tuned into our new series, Prison Stories. You're gonna hear a story from somebody who's either lived it, witnessed it, or experienced it. These stories are gonna turn the hairs on your back up and have your motherfucking toes curling. These stories ain't no fucking joke. You guys think this fucking is a game? This ain't no motherfucking game. Anything could happen to you in prison. And these are prison stories. Hey, what's up, tribe? Badger here with Fresh Out. Uh, I wanted to bring up a few things today. One of them is, you know, a lot of you guys think this is a game. It's not. You know, it's one thing to laugh and make jokes as if you're the baddest dude behind a keyboard, you know. Uh, but once you're behind the wall, there's just certain rules you're gonna follow. I've, I've seen all your tough guy comments and this and that. And I've never seen one of you guys inside. So either A, you're way smarter than me, or B, you just conform to what you conform to when you get to the house. Uh, there's some things you can't unsee, you know? And, and like it's affecting, it does affect you, you know? Uh, here at Fresh Out, we're not promoting wig splitting and cheek busting. What we're doing is letting you know that these things occur. You know, they occur on a daily basis and you're either the victim or the victor in that situation. And we don't want you to think that we're promoting any of that because what we were trying to do is just get some knowledge out there. Uh, another thing is the snitching. You guys keep bringing up snitching. Don't think that we haven't talked to our people and made sure that we're good on doing what we're doing. And you know why they're good with us doing what we do? Because we're trying to keep some of you nutsacks out of the fucking penitentiary. You know, it, it's hopefully you can gain a little knowledge and then hopefully you, if you do gain the knowledge and you do end up slipping because nobody's perfect, I get it. You know, I'm not walking in your shoes. I don't know what you're doing. You know, only you do. Uh, I know what I've done and I live with that on a daily basis. So, and, and you guys always, oh, he's PTSD'd out or whatever, you know. Uh, I figured the way I avoided PTSD was to be the cause of PTSD. So, not that I'm a tough guy, but I tell you what, when you're behind the wall, there's a lot of things that change, and, and you're one of them. It's just how it is. You know, I was thinking back the other night on some content to bring you guys, because everybody wants the gory fucking details. You know, there's just some things that we can't expose on here, and there's just some things that would just sound like fucking ludicrous bullshit. You know what I mean? When it's all true shit. You know, I was thinking back in a old L.A. County jail up on 95,000 floor. It was called Hell on Earth. It was really called Hell on Earth for white boys because there'd be like fucking 8 or 12 of us in a fucking facility that had 300 people up there, you know? And I'm not going to go into what race it was, but I watched this other kid come in bumping his gums about being all this and being all that and... I think his nickname was Killa. So what ended up happening to this kid was a couple of fellows were down from the joint going back to court. And had, back then you were still entitled to wear your state boots or whatever shoes you came in with. And this kid got his fucking cheeks busted right there in front of fucking 300 people. You know what I mean? Two convicts from the joint just fucking took that kid viciously. And I mean viciously. And there was no screaming about it. Shove his face in the pillow. And he was just taken advantage of it. And it didn't end there. What did end up happening is when they were done and he was beaten down on the ground, the first big guy crawled up onto the top bunk and he jumped down with those state boots on his head. And the only thing I saw was gray matter, and I knew that the kid was done. You know, uh, these were rude awakenings to me. You know what I mean? Like, this is how I live. I live in a concrete jungle now with savages, you know? And I need to be just as savage as they are. And that doesn't mean that that's how I went in there, you know? But you're going to be just as vicious as the next guy just so that you're left the fuck alone. So... You know, that's like one of the stories that I, I, I remember so vividly. And another story that I remember so vividly was I was in HOJJ, Old Hall of Justice, and I had court the next morning. So I'm up playing fucking one of these lawyers. I'm like, you know, some lawyer in my head where I'm beating my case in every which way imaginable. And we all know that that's not the case. But 
what I, there was this one kid, once again, I'll leave some details out, but every time he would go to the bathroom, there were two guys that would fucking just pummel the shit out of him. Like any time he got around them they and out of sight of the man, they would just pummel the shit out of this kid. And you know, he had had enough. He was there for some minor charge, just like I, I originated on some minor charge and getting his ass beat on a regular basis. Fortunately, these savages decided not to take his ass, you know, I mean, probably because of the repercussions that would have occurred by other inmates if they had. But him getting his ass beat, that was just a form of entertainment, you know, I mean, TV wasn't playing that day. And uh, so I'm up late at night, fucking going through my court papers, fucking figuring out how I'm going to beat my case. And I look over, it's about three in the morning, I look over and the kid's fucking just sitting there, he seemed to have lost it, you know what I mean? He looked at me and he goes, <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck? So I tried to turn away, you know, and I, I didn't want to get too in depth in whatever the fuck he had going on. I figured at that point he had lost it. And uh, well, I didn't picture what was coming next. You know, he very slowly creeped off his top rack, made his bed up a little bit, I was trying to read a book at this point, and I'm pretty sure the book was probably upside down because it was more interested in what he had going on. And as he started walking towards the bathroom, I'm thinking, this fucking kid, he's either A, trying to sneak into the bathroom and take a leak, or something's getting ready to go down. And you can always tell when something's are getting ready to go down because you feel it inside, you know? And as he got closer to the bunk, the big one of the big guys slept on a bottom rack right next to the toilets going into the toilets. And as he got closer, he pulled a pencil out of his fucking top pocket. Back then, you were still entitled to carry a pencil, you know, whatever they are, six, eight-inch pencils. And no words. As he got closer to the bunk, he started tiptoeing. And when he got up to the guy, he put it right at his ear, and he went, pop. That's all you heard, a slap and a thunk. You know, the dude never moved, never nothing. And he looked back at me, and he gave me the same... <laughs> Like, I ain't fucking with this dude in any way, shape, or form. <clears throat> he went in, washed up, came back. I continued to mind my own business. And I went to court that day. And when I returned, the whole pod was cleared out. All new fucking people in that pod. So whatever occurred during the day, I couldn't say. I caught the late bus coming back. So I didn't get back till late. But the entire facility was cleared out. You know, I'm sure he got away with it. You know, I'm sure his partner fucking knew who did it. The the, the big guy's partner who beat him up. Uh, I'm sure he's grateful that he wasn't the one, you know. Um, so, these things start to affect you, you know what I mean? You start to realize that this is your life today. And... and you don't want it to be at that particular moment. That's not who you want to become. It's not who I wanted to become. You know, we become a product of our environment in there. And I said, I don't walk in your shoes. You know, most of you guys are doing the right thing. You're watching some educational shit on us and we've lived it for you. I can assure you it all sounds glorious until you get there and you're living in that fear. Because I don't care who you are, how tough a guy you are. We have a motto in there, four on one's fun when you ain't the one. You know, I mean, that's just how it is. You're going to conform to what we tell you you're going to fucking conform to. So I'm sure you guys are going to have some tough guy comments on this. That's fine. You know, in the beginning when I started helping these guys out, that shit affected me. It doesn't affect me anymore. I've fucking gone to your photos and seen who you are, and I know that you would conform quicker than anybody, you know. So the things that we bring up are not to fucking promote any of this shit. It's to let you know what goes on in there. It, it, it's a concrete jungle with fucking animals and savages, you know. And... and I'm not disrespecting anybody that's in there because like we make a bad decision one day and fucking that's where we end up, you know? It's as quickly as uh, not learning how to control your emotions, not knowing how to control your emotions because of how you grew up, um, wanting to be part of. I remember, you know, these cats would come rolling in, fucking, what's up, fucking 
Big Paco from wherever, you know what I mean? And I'm like, hey, what's up? You know what I mean? Big Bird from West Side Sesame Street, you know what I mean? Like, because it just became so monotonous to me that it was old. Everybody wanted to be from somewhere, you know? And therefore, they were willing to do whatever they were told to do just so that they could claim being from somewhere, you know? Uh, and claiming being from somewhere and not being from there, I've seen so many people get caught up behind that too. So I just wanted to say, if you think it's a game and you're that tough guy, you know, you can always go test your shit. Here at Fresh Out, we're just trying to let you know there's a better way of life and it's staying out here. You know, uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity for those that are willing to listen and go, you know, because I get quite a few comments saying, hey, thanks, man. Like I was thinking of making support decisions and, you know, some of your t content has uh, changed my mind on that. So... You know, with that said, there's just so many things that you can't unsee when you're there. And then you guys, we come out here in society and they're like, fucking, he's PTSD'd out or he's whatever. Well, no shit. You know what I mean? Like you're living in fear constantly, 24-7. I don't give a shit who you are. You're always paying attention to your environment. You're always, you know, on fucking high alert. Stay ready. You ain't got to get ready. That's one of our mottos. You know, and I live by that. You walk, you, go, you fucking wear your state boots to the shower, for Christ's sakes, you know. Um, carrying your little towel, wearing your little boxers, you know, waiting in line, fucking. When it's your people's turn to fucking get, in, get into the showers, you got this guy on point. All this for while you're in the showers, you know. Marcus had brought up in the last video, oh, he caught him on the shitter, you know what I mean? Fucking, we never pull our pants all the way down, you know what I mean? We pull our pants down right to here. And then fucking that's how we sit on the toilet. So if anything happens, we're up, ready to go, you know, because you're not going to catch us weak. And generally, if you're anybody, you've already got a point, man, whether you're in the shower, whether you're on the shitter, whatever the case is, you've got a point, man, that's fucking keeping point for you. It's no way alive. Hey, dog, I got to take a shit. Can you come keep point? I mean, dog, I'm trying to read Hustler right now and get my jack off on, you know, <laughs> so... If you're out here enjoying life, and if you're not enjoying life, start enjoying life. You know what I mean? If you're miserable at your job, quit your job. Find a job you like. If you're miserable with your girl, fucking don't settle, man. We got one life. Let's fucking savor it. Every bit of it. You know? I don't know what you're planning on doing, but I'm not going to squander the, God, the time that gods have given me on this planet again. You know what I mean? Like, every day is a push for me, and every day is a struggle for me. You know? I don't want any of you guys to think that it's not. I get up and I have to push myself. And, and I could fall into that lazy, con you know, I'm going to stay in bed for a while. That's not the case. This morning I was up at the gym knowing that I was coming down here to do this today. And um, I want to throw out a fucking thank you to Christopher Morales. If you've seen his show, thanks, Chris. You know, he got me a little plate. So, like, there's things we do that are... are uh, Self-care, let's call it self-care, you know what I mean? We take care of ourselves today so that we can take care of shit around us, you know, like, and we can deal with shit that comes to us. You know, uh, a lot of you guys ask for content on the, on the comments that, you know, we just can't fucking, we can't for our own safety, for our family's safety. Uh, like I said, I, this isn't a debriefing. It's not a debriefing. We're not gonna tell you all the shit and gory details that we've done because a, we're still riding on those crimes or whatever, you know. Uh, I'm grateful to not be a criminal today, you know. I'm grateful that I, got, I just came from in and out with my boy. Fucking uh, had a chocolate shake instead of chocolate milk, you know. I, I, got, I get to eat what I want and do what I want. I get to, but guess what? I got to work for that. I don't got to sit around and fucking be like, where's my Obama phone and this and that. Like, I could do all that. You know what I mean? I came out here with nothing. Absolutely nothing. And I work in treatment now. So, you know, like I got counseling skills as far as that goes because of all the fucking yards that I've had to deal with this and that. You know, hopefully you never have to find out what this and that is. You know, uh... You know what I mean? So, you guys are always clowning me about that, too. It's some things are hard to give up. They're just embedded in your brain. And, and if you do a little stint, you know, like 10, 15, 20 years, it gets embedded in your brain, you know? Uh, life is good, man. 
life is what we make it too. And I choose to make it good today. The world is full of good people. If you can't find one, be one. Hey guys, Badger here from Heavy Hitters. So I'd like to throw a shout out to Big Herc at 916 and to the Fresh Out crew. Uh, I'll be bringing you testimonies from everything from uh, homelessness to human trafficking to the brutal streets of Los Angeles. You know, treatment could be part of the problem or it could be part of the solution. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a living proof of that, you know. If you don't know my story, go to Fresh Out, how driving on a suspended license led to 20 years incarceration, and be prepared to be entertained. If I can do anything to help you, please get at me at badgersheavyhitters at gmail.com. Looking forward to hearing from you. For all the viewers and subscribers who would like to become part of the supporting crew at $4.99 a month and contribute to the Fresh Out channel. This is what you'll be getting. An exclusive look at all up and coming spreads episodes. Learn what ingredients and recipes are used in prison to elevate the eating experience and how to get creative with what's available. Get your name in the credits. By becoming a member to the channel, you are directly helping us create better content. And out of acknowledgement, your name will be shown in the credits of the Fresh Out interviews. You will also gain exclusive members only access to footage that has never been seen before from our archives. Unreleased episodes, behind the scenes, bloopers, and that gritty stuff you guys like to talk about, but we can't really share on the regular YouTube channel. Bi-annually, you'll also get a commissary package. First six months, membership will get an apparel package of Fresh Out clothing, and the next six months, you guys will get a spreads package with all the recipes and ingredients you'll need to bust that fat-ass spread. Last but not least, as an additional perk for supporting the channel and helping us create bigger and better content, all members get an exclusive discount code to use in the Fresh Out commissary store. You'll receive 10% off all orders, no matter how big or small, and this is for unlimited use, not a one-time thing. You'll get to use this 10% whenever you want, as long as you're a paid member. All this will be available in the community tab for all you paid exclusive members. You will also get to represent the Rig Splitter crew. All members to the channel will receive this dope Wig Splitter badge icon that appears next to your name whenever you post on the channel. I've got your back on the open talks and we'll be able to answer your questions as a priority and sometimes, man, you just gotta represent. We also support nonprofit charities. After YouTube takes their cut of the $4.99, we will donate a percentage of all membership revenue to a worthwhile cause every quarter. Well, that's it, you guys. We hope you guys uh, take that step and become a paid member and support us so we can travel to your state or your town and do an interview and keep bringing you this dope content. But remember, guys, the channel's still free but there are a lot of perks to becoming a paid member. Big Hurt, fresh out. Lockdown's over. Get your yard time in. Exclusively at FreshOutSeries.com.